I'm Simon Berry and I'm the co-founder of Colour Life and the other co-founder is... I'm Jane Berry, um, I founded Colour Life with Simon, it's a charity, very very small charity uh, based in the UK but um, what we're trying to find out is what the conundrum of why Coca-Cola gets to remote places in developing countries but simple life-saving medicines don't and we set ourselves that task uh, in about 2009. Mm. And that all started way back in the late 80s when I was bumping around in the northern part of Zambia where there were very few people. Um, uh, but wherever I went it seemed I could get a Coca-Cola. Uh, but the backdrop to that was at the same time as that was all happening, one in five children didn't make it to their fifth birthday. And then I found out that um, uh, the biggest killer, or the second biggest killer, just as is it's nearly the biggest killer, is dehydration from diarrhoea. So what is a nuisance to us in the West is actually a primary killer of under five children. So that's where, that's where it started. So we're not health professionals, but that came to our notice when we were living in a remote part of, of Zambia in the late 1980s. And Simon's idea was, well, why don't we get Coca-Cola to see if they'll help to distribute medicines? But at that time, we only had in the office a, a telex machine, uh, which wasn't exactly a, a mass communications tool. And when we tried to get Coca-Cola's attention to see if they would assist, um, well, just got nothing, anywhere. nowhere. But then roll forward 20 years and you've got Facebook, you've got phones, um, and so um, having sort of brought up our children and having a bit of spare time, I thought I'll go and have a look and see if anyone's done this, you know, actually use the Coca-Cola system to distribute medicines. And I found that they hadn't, so I started up a Facebook group. And the Facebook group started with the thing saying, why don't we put medicine in Coca-Cola crates? And then, very shortly actually, very quickly, we ended up with a thousand people thinking that was a good idea. And of course, when you've got a thousand people behind you, all potential customers of Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola's attitude to you changes. And we were able to get the attention of the BBC, and through the BBC we got invited to an interview with Coca-Cola. And that's how the relationship with Coca-Cola started, which has been a hugely beneficial relationship for us. So having sort of started this cool campaign, by this time we had about 8,000 followers on Facebook and it generated a huge amount of interest. We were faced with this thing of, what if we don't do something, no one's going to and we're going to go down as these people who had this brilliant idea and then did nothing about it. So we decided we should do something about it and um, decided to give ourselves a year to, to, I, well, I was coming to an end of a contract with the government, uh, Jane was doing consultancy, and we said, let's see if we can get something going somewhere in Africa. And we, we gave ourselves a year to do that. At this point, we, Jane got worried about the money. Yeah, so that I put in a bid to Unlimited, and um, I come from a fundraising background, and neither of us are, are health professionals, and neither of us know anything about logistics. But we do know how to ask questions and we do know how to listen and asking the stupid questions is often how you get answers. Uh, we're not shy about doing that. So I put in a bid to um, the Millennium Development Fund Unlimited and we won £15,000 to keep us in bread and butter and beer for a year. And so we, we used that time to research where it might be possible to take this idea forward and uh, we sought Coca-Cola's permission to, uh, to use the space in their crates, which was our initial idea of how we might harness their huge and very successful distribution network. But again, it didn't quite turn out like that. We went to our design partners with a very sort of basic brief. Can you design a pack that would fit into Coca-Cola crates that would carry anti-diarrhea kit? And an anti-diarrhea kit is well, uh, well actually they don't call it an anti-diarrhea kit, they call it a diarrhea treatment kit. That is a well-established product. You can't buy it anywhere, but it's been a well-established product for 10 years or so. Uh, and it consists of ORS, oral rehydration salts and, and zinc. And we went to, the, to our design partner, PI Global, and said, can you make that fit between the necks of the bottles? And so they came up with this package, which uh, has won uh, product design of the year, it's, which we're very pleased about. I don't think many uh, products with the name diarrhea in them have won many awards. But then we won the ethical product of the year as well this year, and, uh, and we caught the 
caught the world's imagination. So this fits into Coca-Cola crates and you can get well, ten, ten of these in, in, in a crate. While we were designing, while we were designing this, uh, we also researched some countries that we thought might be interested in, in running it um, and taking the concept and adapting it to their local situation. And we, we knew Zambia because we'd lived there in the late 80s, so we, we went there first to see if there was any interest. Um, Simon cycled across France uh, to raise money, £6,000. He cycled from Boulogne to Biarritz in eight days. Uh, to raise the sponsorship for our airfares and that actually took us to Zambia uh, three times. Now when we got to Zambia um, we saw the Ministry of Health, we saw UNICEF, we saw local NGOs including Albert's um, Keeper Zambia Foundation which we're going to talk about in a minute and the interest was such that we never actually got to Uganda did we or, in, or Tanzania or the other countries we were going to um, and they said yes we can adapt this idea, um, we can make it work in Zambia, it please do it here. Mm. Uh, so then we had to raise the money, so we put together a plan involving uh, around about seven partners and half a dozen funders, including the Department for International Development. Uh, we didn't get funding from Coca-Cola because we wanted it to be independent, but we got the Department for International Development. And the Johnson Johnson Corporate Citizenship Trust, Honda put some money in, and so have SAB Miller. Yes. So that put together our funding package, and from there we put together the partnership, and our idea was to run a trial, not to save as many lives as possible, but to see what worked, to see what learning we could gather, um, which could be believable. And just before we started that process, uh, we, were con uh, con we were contacted on the internet by a Canadian called Rohit Ramchandani, who was doing his doctorate at one of the top universities of health uh, in the world, actually, Johns Hopkins University. And he said, I want to do my doctorate on your product, on your project, can I design the trial so that it's robust and it can get into in academic journals and so on. And we yeah. said And then that fitted in that fitted in with our objective of trying to generate robust evidence that the most sceptical strategists would believe so that it would seep out into the mainstream. Because we as Kona Life um, are not going to be able to have the impact that's required. It relies on other people taking on what we're learning. And Coda Life's a kitchen table charity. Mm. We've, got, we've got four trustees who are voluntary. We've got us two who are voluntary, although we are paid uh, in Zambia at the moment to, to manage the project. We've got no headquarters, no assets, so we've done it from a kitchen table, literally. Our strategy is not to grow Cola Life and make that the business. Our strategy is to generate learning and evidence that what we're doing works so that local organisations who are there for the long term and know a lot more about the situation than we do so that they, they can take it on. And in fact we're just moving to that phase now in Zambia. But we hope that other countries will see what's happening in Zambia. and pick up the learning and adopt the principles that we, we, we've demonstrated work. This is not about aid, it's about trade. Um, so we're localising as much as possible. So um, although the packaging is very specialist packaging, this is made in the UK, it's been designed so it, it fits in the spaces in the crates, but everything else in here is or will be manufactured in Zambia by Zambian organisations creating jobs for people in Zambia. So the oral rehydration salts, which we've designed in a child-sized 200 millilitre dose, and that can be measured by filling this pack with water to 200 millilitres because we found when speaking to customers that a litre sachet, which is the traditional size, wasn't understood by local people. It's too much. If they make up a whole litre, they have to throw over half of it away because after 24 hours, um, it's not clean anymore. Um, so our local pharmaceutical partner helped us to make up this small sachet. There are eight oral rehydration salt sachets in there. You can measure the water using this kit. Um, the zinc is currently imported, but by the end of the year it's going to be made in Zambia as well, creating more jobs. And there's a little bar of soap in the top there because you can um, avoid at least 50% of the cases of diarrhea by washing your hands, which we all know, and none of us do, uh, not anywhere in the world. So if you give a mother in a rural area this kit and a bar of soap, 
and instructions on how to mix it correctly, how to use it. You can even use this as a cup to feed the child and it's clean. Um, this gives her everything she needs to treat diarrhea, even if it strikes in the middle of the night. And it's available through the local shop, which will likely be less than two kilometers away, where the clinic is typically eight kilometers, 20 kilometers away, and carrying a child that distance in the hot sun who has dehydration can be deadly. What people say is Coca-Cola has the most amazing distribution system in the world. Uh, but they don't. Um, what they do, and this is what we've learned from Coca-Cola, is they create a desirable product, a bottle of Coca-Cola in, in, in their case, a diarrhea treatment kit in our case, and then they work out how much people can afford to pay for it. They market it like mad at that community level, and then they make it profitable for everybody who touches a bottle of their coat from the factory all the way through the distribution system right up to that remote village. Make sure every one of those people makes a profit. And that's been the great learning from this project. Um, it's not been about, as your phrase, not been about the space in the crate in the, year, the end of the day, it's been about the space in the market. Um, and so what happens with this is we, first of all, we spoke to mothers in our target groups to ask them about how they would like this to be branded, obviously didn't use those terms, how, you know, the difficulties they face mixing up ORS and all the rest of it, what they could afford. And then we work backwards from that uh, to make sure that the manufacturer made some money, the distributor makes some money, the wholesaler makes some money, and the retailer makes some money as well. And if you do that, it, you just sit back and it gets there. I always remember the first visit I meant, made after launching the project, I turned up at this really remote place in this shop, which was only about this wide, and I went inside and these were on the shelf. And neither of us had lifted a finger. And that's because the, you know, people say, should you sell a product like this to, to poor people? But that, it gives them a choice. That means that they can choose to go and pay five quatcha in a local shop, instead of paying 20 or 25 quatcha to go to the clinic and then find that there's no stock there and then have to buy something to eat while they're there. If there's no stock, they're then given a prescription, they go over the road and they, they have to pay again. And this is, this is five quatcha within walking distance that they have to pay. That's about a dollar, so it's a lot for people. But a third of that goes to the retailer, so that will in, improve livelihoods in the village and then it goes on from there.